Sacred Goddess Hecate, help me manifest justice in my actions, temperance in my soul, courage in my choices, wisdom in my words, and compassion towards all beings. Hi, I'm Renee Olson. I am the News River Witch, and I am here to talk about the five virtues of Hecate on Kappa and Cards. Um, we, today is the 20th of September. Wow, it is going so fast. <laughs> um, and this is part four of our five part series. We've got one more to go. Having a bit of radios today to go along with our discussion on justice. Um, so just to recap, um, we've already covered uh, compassion, courage, and temperance. So when we were talking about compassion, we were understanding how um, working with the goddess, um, we are able to develop our uh, compassion towards others. And just as the prayer I read earlier, which was part of a, um, a project that I worked on with the Covenant Hecate, um, just like it says there, compassion towards all living beings. And we talked about, you know, compassion towards people and animals and living a, a uh, life that's um, uh, cruelty free, right? So, and in my case, it would be veganism, but you may have your other guidelines for that. Um, the next thing we talked about was courage. And we talked about um, courage being not standing up and not being afraid but standing up in spite of being afraid, being afraid. So the next one was temperance, and temperance was about balance. Um, and I was hit smack dab in the face with some temperance uh, energy this past week. I've done a cut down on some of the different readings and offerings that I have on my channel now, and I'm trying to focus more on sanctuary work. Um, so yeah, I had to come in, I had to look at it and just get a balanced eye to everything because I was really spreading myself way too thin. Um, and just as of all the five virtues, right now we're going to be going into justice. Now, the five virtues themselves all serve as guiding principles for the members of the Covenant of the Hecate, influencing how we interact with others, with the world, and with um, what we believe or how we believe Hecate is in general. Now, I'm speaking of that from a very high level. There are many people who have their own opinions and follow their own um, personal, uh, personal value system. Um, but when we are, when we become members of the Covenant of Hecate, we do pledge to live by these five virtues. So what we're going to talk about today, as I mentioned, is justice. And this is deeply tied to, um, you know, balance, fairness, accountability. Um, it goes beyond more than, than just the courtroom, right? For example, if we were talking about justice as it, as it would be related to um, lawyers and court cases and that sort of thing. Um, it's also around fairness in our actions and our, our relationships and our spiritual practices. So when we're thinking about how it is, how it relates to the other virtues and then how you can incorporate it, um, what we're really talking about here when we're speaking about justice is, you know, everyone likes to call on the goddess to, you know, come back and I'll get justice for you. You know, that's something everyone likes to say. Um, but really what they're talking about is vengeance or revenge. And justice and revenge are two very different things. Um, what you may see as justice, someone else may see as revenge. Um, so you have to be very, very um, cautious when you start uh, calling out or, or asking for those types of things. So, Justice is about fairness and it's about accountability. It's ensuring that the actions align with the values of equity. Um, it's a commitment to doing what's right even when it's difficult and holding ourselves accountable um, just as we hold others accountable for their actions. So let's do a couple of examples here. Um, let's say that you have made a commitment to uh, complete a specific task by a certain date, okay? Something comes up, you forgot about it, you didn't want to do it, you know, whatever. The date passes and you don't complete the task. Um, 
it's not unreasonable for the other person to be to feel like you did not behave in an equitable fashion, right? You were not you were not acting, and you were not um, you were not delivering what you had promised. Um, so that's kind of what we're talking about when you're talking about fairness in our actions, um, relationships, right? When we're talking about relationships, you want to be sure that you're treating everyone. Um, in the same manner, I like to say, in which I would like to be treated. Um, there are some that say better than I want to be treated. Others say, you know, different types of comparisons. But I don't think it's too much to ask. You know, you wouldn't want someone treating you unfairly. You wouldn't want someone, you know, um, taking something from you, stealing, right? Or, or maybe um, sleeping with your partner. Um, or maybe... Um, I don't know, uh, making fun of you behind your back. So you want to be equitable and you want to be fair. You want to re reflect that same thing. So you want to be sure you're not doing those same things. <clears throat> and that's where we're going to be holding ourselves accountable, right? So we're all holding ourselves accountable. That's where we say we do what we say we're going to do. We make a commitment. We stand by that commitment and we complete the task. Right now, my plate is very full. I have a lot of things going on. I've got some travel coming up soon that I need to take. Um, I've got several projects going on, on in my mundane job that are really pressing. You know, we're still getting settled in the new house and everything, so there's a lot of things happening. But I made a commitment to complete this series, and I want to be sure that I do that. And that's not because I believe there's a line of people who are waiting outside to hear what Renee has to say about justice. Um, but it is because I made this commitment to myself and I want to be sure that I deliver on that commitment. And that's kind of what we mean by holding yourself accountable. So some of the key elements of justice, as, as we've already talked about, are you know upholding fairness in the interactions and your decisions ensuring balance in all the areas of your life, and taking accountability and responsibility for your actions. Um, for me, I'm a holistic wellness practitioner. Um, I do a lot with, uh, as you know, obviously we talk about tea all the time. Um, I'm vegan, I do juicing, I do, um, uh, I eat whole food plant-based, um, I try not to eat anything that's in a package or anything with a mother. <laughs> um, and that kind of helps keep me balanced. Um, I try to act fairly as well. So not only do we think about, um, you know, what we're doing with our body and our mind, but we also want to make sure that we're acting and making decisions that are not only beneficial for me, but for those people around me. Um, an example of this would be, uh, the current uh, U.S. presidential election. Um, as I read through the candidates that are available, um, I'm going to look at their qualities and what their policies are on people around me, not just me, right? I want to be sure that, you know, the voices are heard that need to be heard. Um, you know, I don't want to vote for someone who may be coming off a tad racist or who may be um, a person who would be involved in taking away the rights of people. Um, so I try to be sure that when I am making that decision, I'm weighing all those things. And it goes from everything from what stores I shop from, you know, all the way to, you know, a presidential election. So it, it runs the gamut. Um, you could even say that when I purchase products, right, if you go and you look like, for example, if I'm going to buy a particular product, I'll check the label and make sure it's ethically sourced, you know, that, that it's fair wages and, you know, um, fair trade. And I'll try to make sure that um, I'm buying first from women owned and black owned and LGBT owned before I'll uh, frequent the other uh, avenues. Um, Finally, for me, I think it's doing what's right even when it's hard. I think ultimately, ultimately, the, the, real re, the real thing about justice is just being able to do exactly what needs to be done, even if 
it is a struggle for me. Even if it means I need to suffer or I will have some sort of blowback because of it, um, I am the person to say, we're gonna do this. I, I, I always like to say, you know, if you're gonna break the law, don't tell me about it. Um, if you are going to be someone who is, um, you know, <laughs> basically committing a crime, I'm not gonna hide you. Um, I don't care who you are. Um, family members, it doesn't matter. If you do the crime, you're gonna do the time. Um, I, I honestly believe that. Um, now, if you're innocent, you know, call me up and I will defend you with my dying breath. Um, but I am definitely all about following the rules and making sure that the rules are upheld uh, equally for everyone. Now, of course, we want those rules to be just, but that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> um, okay. So now we're going to look at this from a, uh, a Hecatean perspective, right? When we think about justice, why do we believe that this is a quality or a virtue of Hecate? Um, so if we look at some of the aspects of her, like for example, she is known as a protector of the marginalized. So throughout mythology, right, um, she's known to protect the vulnerables, those at the edges of society, travelers, women, those in transition. Um, her role as a protector reflects uh, a deep connection to justice and ensuring those who are often overlooked receive protection and care, right? So we can, we can see this in um, many, many of the stories, of course, as her role as a uh, carer of women, right? For example, um, she is, uh, God, the, the term escapes me right now and I should have jotted it down, but, you know, of, of women who are giving birth. She is absolutely, you know, known as their protector. Um, and then that's also that transitional part of life, right? So we're looking at those birth and death. She would be in that area uh, presiding over that way. Um, another way that we can see that um, Hecate is related to justice is related to the practices that involved invoking curses um, or spells meant to bind or seek vengeance against people who felt they had been committed or had wrongs committed against them. Um, this reflects her role as a goddess of karmic justice, right? By invoking Hecate and these curses, individuals thought that they could ensure that wrongdoers faced consequences, um, restoring a balance, you know, when justice wasn't served uh, by human laws. And sometimes, even if they were, <laughs> um, but there have been several cases where uh, rolled scrolls and tablets have been found where Hecate has been called upon to to uh, bring some justice into the situation. Um, another right way that you could see this as justice is her role uh, as being the keeper of the crossroads, right? As the goddess of the crossroads, she guides those making choices, right? She's there, she's ensuring that the paths we take are aligned with fairness and ethic, uh, ethical responsibility. Her presence there reminds us that, there, that each choice has consequences and we have to act with integrity. So you could see that and sort of, and, and glean that, if you will, from that role. Um, there's also uh, in the Chaldean oracles, right? She's seen as a cosmic mediator. She stands in balance between the material and the divine world. And I think this further emphasizes an upholding of justice because she's in ensuring that order is there, right? She's there to create the separation and balance of, of uh, the material and the, um, I'm sorry, uh, the material world and the when I said material, suddenly Madonna's song went through my head, and that's what happens sometimes when you're neurodivergent. Um, the spiritual and the physical world, I should say. Um, and then one other thing that I thought about when I was uh, preparing for this um, was uh, the story of Medea, right? Because Medea was a, a, the, a powerful source. She was a, a follower of Hecate, and she called upon Hecate to take vengeance or take revenge there's that word, justice, revenge, we don't know. Um, but, you know, to get, you know, Jason taken care of. So there are many references to how um, Hecate can re relate directly to justice and how we can infer that based upon the role she's playing in, in the current area that she's at. So now let's talk about, what about right now, right? 
I don't, I don't need to go off on the trip with the Argonauts, you know, the Chaldean Oracles are great, but they're not helping me out right now. And yeah, I could probably whip up a, a charm or a, or a curse and maybe a bind that might help me out in the spiritual, but what am I going to do in the modern real world today to help bring in justice? Um, so a couple of examples of this, <clears throat> and I'm just going to sip my tea again. A couple of examples of this are going to be, um, let's start with uh, social justice and ad ad advocacy. Um, as you already know, um, I, I'm the founder of the Sanctuary of Hecate Bremo. So with Hecate Bremo, I do a lot of work uh, with, for the Blessing Box of Goldsboro. So what this is, it's a local charity. Um, it's organized and these boxes are set up all across the county and we just fill them up with food and then anyone who needs it can take it. You know, we don't ask how much money you make. We don't even check. Um, we just put food in the boxes. If you need it, take it. If you have it to give, leave it. And there are some days I go and the boxes are full, right? So everyone's come and they've made donations. And then there's some times that I'll go past and every single time I go, it's empty and we're constantly refilling them. Um, so part of what I do to help ensure balance and justice and equity and fairness is I try to make sure that I give back so that those who need food can have it. When I was um, a small child, um, my family was on public assistance. My stepfather, my, my father was in prison. My stepfather was an alcoholic. So I did not have the strongest upbringing. Um, and we, there were a lot of times when we just did not have food. Um, there were many times when we didn't have electricity. Um, so what I try to do is in any way I can is, is give back, right? When I have extra, I give back. On my website, I have classes, I have um, items for sale, I have things that I've made, I have things that I've purchased. And all of those things are for sale and I take all of that money that comes in and I buy um, chapstick and gloves and socks and food, you know, non-perishable. Sometimes I'll get fresh fruit and bananas and, you know, oranges and fill these boxes up so that um, I can continue to, to give back and be what I needed um, when I was young. So that's one way that you can give back and you can stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves and advocate for fairness. Um, in our societal systems, be it, you know, Black Lives Matter, be it immigration equality, be it marriage equality, any of those areas could always use um, a volunteer or two. Another way that you can do it on a more personal level is holding yourself accountable, right? Own your mistakes. Own what, maybe you don't feel like it's a mistake. One of the things is my work with AI. A lot of people don't like it. They're like, oh, rah, rah, rah. they're very upset about it, okay? I own it, right? It's mine. I don't believe it's wrong. It helps me with my neurodivergence. It helps me break through blocks that I've had for years with writing and with, um, with creating. So uh, I enjoy it and I'm gonna use it and I will tell anyone who's interested that I use it. Um, so own that, own your accountability. Um, Another way that you can do this on a personal level is ensure fairness in your relationships, right? Relationships are built on respect. They're built on mutual respect and mutual understanding. If you tell someone you're going to do something, do it, right? If you have other things that come up, just let them know, right? Communicate. Um, treat others the way you want to be treated. Um, another way you can do this is ethical decision making, right? So that's what we talked about before. You cannot, and I'm just gonna step up on my little pedestal here for a second. You cannot, in clear conscience, tell someone that you love them and then turn around and do something that you know will hurt them. Um, you can't tell an LGBT person that you love them and then vote for anti-LGBT policies. You cannot tell your partner that you love them and then turn around and, you know, have sex with someone else, you know, if that is not, a, you know, if you're not in a polyamorous relationship, obviously. Um, so you need to make your decisions ethical, beneficial, and fair. Um, 
So justice is not just about laws and courts that we talk about. It's living life rooted in fairness and accountability. Justice calls for us to ensure that our actions reflect the ethical values that Hecate stood for. And that's what we wanna do each day of our life. That's what I try to do every day. Um, reflect here on what you think would bring more fairness into your life. How can you embody justice in your decision-making, in your relationships, and in your spiritual practices? And just as Hecate stands at the crossroads, helping us navigate our choices with fairness, may we all find the courage to act with integrity and to uphold justice in every aspect of our lives. What do you think? How does justice work with you? All right, our next discussion will be on wisdom, and that is going to be on September 27th. So be sure to tune in for that. Now we're gonna pull a card. All right, get your hair magic. We are gonna pull a card today. And the card that we pull is so cute. I love this card. Here's our card for today. Let's see if you can see it. That is the possum card. Our key words are clever, strategy, and survival. So when we think about this card today, cleverness obviously is just being ahead of the game, thinking everything out, being on, being on top of what you have going on so that you know that you are ready to take on the day. Strategy. Strategy is a plan. Do you have a plan? Do you have a semblance of a plan? You see what I did there? <laughs> have a plan. Have a strategy for moving forward. Think about what you need to do and take the steps ahead of time to make note of that so that you're not caught off guard. And finally, the last word is survival. Survival, of course, is how we get along. What's going to be left after the dust settles? Um, take a moment, settle down, reflect on this, make sure that you come to terms with what you need to make each day better. And that's our reading for today. I hope you've enjoyed our vlog. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be doing, um, we are going to be doing wisdom in the final episode of this series. Um, what do you think of this series? Did you enjoy it? Are there other things you'd like to talk about? Um, would you like to collaborate on something? Feel free to leave me a comment um, in the notes here in the bottom of the, the video. And um, yeah, I hope you have a glorious day today and I'll talk to you soon.